Okay, guys, so today we're going to talk about our first unit, shading charts and graphite pencils. Um, so you'll notice um, in your packets, you've got a variety of different pencils. You've got a 6H, which if you look at my webcam, it's the turquoise one. You've got a HB, which is this black one. Okay, and you've got a 5B, which is the blue one. One of your pencils should have, or in your packet, you should have a pencil top eraser, as well as a blending stump. That's what this is called. This is also called a tourlion. Okay, but I'm going to call it a blending stump. And you also got a, if you see here, a pencil sharpener. Okay, if you want to look up at the webcam to see that. Those are the materials that we are going to use. Um, You'll notice that at the end of each pencil, there is a different designation. Um, that'll be the uh, either a number and a letter, or just two letters. But the turquoise one is referred to as the 6H. The regular black one is referred to as the HB. Okay, and then the blue one is referred to as the 5B. Each pencil has its own unique task and its own unique job. Um, I'm going to get into that a little bit later, but first let's take a look at what we're going to be learning today. So what our learning objective is, is we're going to learn new vocabulary affiliated with value um, and texture, the first two elements of art that we're going to be discussing. Um, we're going to discuss the difference between the two of them. Um, we're going to experiment with a variety of mark making techniques, so we're actually going to draw today. And we're going to finally explore our first medium, which is graphite. A medium is just something you use to make art. You can have anything as your medium. Um, you could use, you know, I've seen artists that use food as their medium, chocolate or ketchup or whatever. I've seen artists who use their physical body as a medium or your more traditional methods such as painting or graphite or uh, clay. All of these are called media, plural, or medium, singular. So for our first two unit, we're going to focus exclusively on graphite. So with graphite, we're going to create value. Value is the relative lightness or darkness of a color. Here we're looking at a value scale. Um, first, we have our absolute black. Okay, then we have our mid-tone, which refers to as kind of those gray tones that fall in between. And then we have absolute white. Well, how are you going to achieve absolute white on your paper? Well, you're not going to color it in. Okay, the easiest way to create white? Don't shade something in. Uh, how do you create that value? You use want to use something called stroke frequency. Okay, what is that? Well, if you break it down, it's just how often you make a mark. You can have high stroke frequency or low stroke frequency. A high frequency makes a, a, a smooth appearance. So we often want to use a high frequency for value. So when we create our value scales, we want to use a high stroke frequency. We want all of those marks to be very close together. You're going to see an example of this in the uh, value scales. I'm going to demonstrate. Low stroke frequency is great for details like texture. Um, we're going to go over a couple ways to create texture again later. So again, high frequency, a lot of marks. Low frequency, few marks. Another way to create value or the relative lightness or darkness of something is through pressure, okay? A lot of beginning artists are very tempted to press those their pencils into the paper to create a hard, dark value. But the better way, the better process is actually to add light layers on top of each other. So you uh, you always want to kind of hold, you never want to press really hard into the paper. You always want to kind of press with a mid-tone and just add layers. You're going to have plenty of time to practice this on your own. But again, try and stay away from hard pressure, always in the mid to light range. So let's talk about ways you can create value. Um, there are two kind of general strategies we're going to talk about first. Hatching which creates values by placing strokes side by side. Notice how this sphere has created the illusion of depth, it looks 3D, um, by placing different stroke frequencies at different areas of the mark. Notice how it's kind of lighter pressure, less strokes at the top, more strokes, heavier pressure at the bottom. 
Cross-hatching is when you create a variety of values by doing intersecting strokes. They kind of make an X or a T. They just cross with each other. Okay. So again, hatching, everything goes in one direction. Cross-hatching, they go in opposite directions. To create texture, you can do scumbling, which is creating curly circular marks. This is great for uh, hair or uh, creating bushes or the illusion of vegetation. Um, every kind of mark has its place. So scumbling, or as this, you know, or squiggly marks. Next, you have stippling, creating dots, a dot-like effect. Okay, this is great for creating textures for skin or maybe even like the illusion of earth, um, but just kind of creating dots. And both of these marks use uh, stroke frequency to create the illusion of light versus dark. Notice how in the stippling sphere, there are more dots at the bottom, less dots at the top. Here is applying all of the hatching, cross-hatching, stippling, scumbling to a value scale. Remember, a value scale is just creating darkness to lightness in a smooth transition. You'll also notice there's one more technique here at the bottom I haven't gone over yet, blending. This is what we'll be doing. Okay, we're gonna be creating a value scale. So again, uh, hatching and cross-hatching are great for creating value. Okay, they have a high frequency, more hatching than cross, and some blending. Notice how I say some versus a lot. Texture, you wanna use low frequency, uh, more texture in the darker areas, less in the lighter. And then you want to take into account the 3D nature of the form. Okay, where you place those marks is important. Okay, and again, I'll go over this. We're going to have a sketchbook prompt uh, at the end of the week where we kind of talk about how to apply texture to 3D forms. So remember I mentioned blending? You want to use some blending. Um, blending is often kind of a tool that a lot of artists at the beginning of their careers tend to use too much because um, it makes everything look nice and smooth. But in reality, overblending, blending is difficult to control. So if you look at the horse on the left, you'll notice how there is clearly some blending in the skin to give it a smooth texture. But they've also applied a variety of marks uh, on top of that blending. I see some kind of texture in the hair. I see a clear designation between the shadows and the highlights that make this horse look 3D. When students blend, they tend to look more like the horse on the right, where those shadows and highlights, the dark areas and light areas, just kind of disappear. So while blending is important for creating, you know, that smooth texture, please be aware that it easily gets away from you. So I discourage everyone from doing blending on their first project, but it is going to come into play later in the year, hence why I'm introducing it now. So now what I'd like everyone to do is just to take a moment and experiment with the three pencils that you've been given. I want you to, as you use each pencil, describe, like think about words that describe them. Okay, so just take a moment, pause the video, and use each pencil. Use the 5B, that's the blue one. Use the HB, the black one, and the 6H, okay, the teal, turquoise one. Once you're done, come back and we'll discuss how each one is different. Okay, we're going to start with the 6H first. How would you describe the 6H pencil? Well, I would describe the 6H as being lighter, uh, more difficult to crosshatch. It's almost difficult to see. Um, that's because H stands for hard, okay? Which means the, the pencil itself is harder because it has more clay in it. Okay, that's why it has that light texture. Um, often artists are tempted to use the 6H for sketching because it's the lightest. They think, oh, I'll use the lightest for sketching. It'll be the most difficult to erase. To erase. And while the 6H is okay for sketching, I actually would prefer you to use the HB for sketching. The HB is kind of your middle of the road pencil, all right? It's kind of in between the two. Now, because the 5B is very black, B stands for black, okay? It has more graphite, it's softer, smoother, but very difficult to erase. It also easily smudges. So 
which pencil do you think would be best for your uh, lighter tones and your mid-tones? Which pencil do you think will be best for your shadows and your dark tones? Which pencil will be with falls right in the middle? Because as you're shading in your projects, you choose what pencil to use. So I want you to kind of, as we move forward, think about that. Okay? So thank you for tuning in for this first lecture. Stay tuned for our video demonstration on how to use all of our pencils and how to complete our value scales.